What's going on you guys? My name is Zach Hartley and welcome back to another weekly watch list video. In this series, my goal is to share with you how I feel about the market conditions as well as what stocks are at the top of my list going into the week ahead. So if you get any value out of that, remember to click that like and subscribe button and let's jump right in. Okay, so last week on the NASDAQ was pretty choppy and the week before that was also pretty choppy and we are in the middle of a pullback on the NASDAQ. It looks like we don't have a clear market direction right now. We may have some support at 15,000 here and if 15,000 falls through and it doesn't hold up, the next level of support is probably gonna be around this 14,000 200 levels. So the NASDAQ as of right now is fairly choppy. We don't have a clear direction. We're kind of in a bearish trend right now over the last sort of month and it's not looking great for the NASDAQ. The S&P 500 though is looking a little bit better. We've basically been trading sideways for the last sort of month and a half here and as of right now we're within a couple percent of our all-time highs so no major major red flags on the S&P 500. We did have some of our highest volume over the last six months though on Friday and it was almost a gap down on Friday so that is not a good sign and we do have a couple of warning signs that we're going to talk about in this video so make sure you stay tuned but the s p 500 as of right now doing a little bit better than the nasdaq and the dow jones also doing a little bit better than the nasdaq still pulling back a little bit we had a nice recovery two weeks ago but over the last week it was extremely choppy and we closed with a high volume red day on friday so a couple of concerns to watch for now the Russell 2000, this is a chart that I don't usually show on this watch list, but I think it shows something interesting because all of the three indices that I just showed you right now are largely driven by large market cap stocks. So for instance, Google, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon make up a very, very large portion of the NASDAQ and those stocks basically determine the direction of the NASDAQ. But when you eliminate those stocks, such as an index like the Russell 2000, where they are taking 2000 small and medium sized companies and they're putting them into an index. If you look at those companies that are smaller, they are getting hit way, way harder. And we can see that here because the Russell 2000 is actually down about 12%, whereas most of our other indices are only down by between two and 8% the smaller cap companies are getting hit way, way harder than the larger cap companies. And we can see that because Apple over the last two weeks has been setting all time highs, whereas other tech companies have been completely selling off, even with better growth, not quite as good of a balance sheet though. Now, one other thing I wanna point out to you here is the volatility index. And this goes up when there is uncertainty and volatility in the market. And as of right now, we're trading at 136, which was actually the highs, the high points that we had set throughout the last six months. We did break through right here at the beginning of December. And this breakthrough actually lines up perfectly with the Dow Jones. We had this dip right here in the Dow Jones at the beginning of December. And you can see that the timing actually lines up. And so when the market goes down, the volatility index index goes up. That is what we are seeing right now. And this is kind of confirmation that the, the market doesn't have a clear direction right now. And if you were going to give it a direction, it would probably be bearish at least over the last two to three weeks. Now, just for reference, here's what Bitcoin looks like. And Bitcoin is also very, very bearish over the last few weeks, falling from a high of around 68,000 down to 46,000 right now. Looks like we could see some support step in around 40,000. But as of right now, Bitcoin is fairly bearish and we have a couple of red flags that we need to talk about here, starting with COVID. So this is the chart of daily new cases in the USA. And you can see that over the last few weeks here, the number is rising. It's not skyrocketing, but it's definitely going up. And I think with the holidays coming up, it's probably gonna go up faster over the next few weeks. Now, I personally live in Canada, and when we look at the chart for Canada, it is skyrocketing. The cases in Canada are absolutely skyrocketing. They're going up fast, and we are pretty much at the peak of what we have been at over the last almost year. We are very, very close to our all-time highs right now. And this is a major concern, because just personally, myself, most people in Canada do not feel like we are at all time highs right now. Most people in Canada are not super concerned about COVID, but we are starting to see more and more restrictions come in. Just in the last few days, Ontario announced restrictions and BC announced more limitations on how many people you can have at events. And so all across Canada, we are starting to see some restrictions step in. And I think that could have a negative impact 
on stocks over the next week because Omicron is getting worse in Canada and the United States. Maybe not as bad in the United States, but if we start to see that accelerate, that could be a negative catalyst for the market. Now, when it comes to earnings over the next few days here, we have got anticipated earnings coming out from Carnival Corporation. That is a cruise line company. So that's gonna be very, very interesting, especially since they open Monday morning. We also have Micron and Nike coming out on Monday after the close. We have Blackberry coming out on Tuesday after the close, and then a couple of other companies out coming out on Wednesday. But it is a pretty light earnings week. There's no major, major earnings. We also have General Mills. That's a pretty big company. So lots going on, but definitely not a huge earnings earnings week. Now, my portfolio. So just to give you guys transparency, I am holding a lot of cash right now. I just watched Daniel Pronk's video and a couple other people's videos about how you should stay invested. Me personally, I'm taking just a slightly different approach. Not saying they're wrong by any means, but I'm holding cash right now. And the reasons that I'm holding cash right now are because number one, there's a lot of market volatility and there's not a very clear direction in the market. So I am making some short-term day trades. I'm making a couple of short-term swing trades, but I'm not heavily investing into the market right now because I think there's a chance that we see a medium-sized correction. I also think I'm gonna have a fairly large tax bill at the end of this year, so I'm trying to save up some cash for that. I've also sold some losing positions to take advantage of tax loss harvesting. If you don't know what that is, I just sent out an email to all of my subscribers on my website explaining everything they need to know about tax loss harvesting. I also have a video on my YouTube channel. You have like a week and a half, two weeks left to take advantage of tax loss harvesting and save yourself some money on your taxes. If you don't know what I'm talking about, search for my video on YouTube. I promise you it's well worth your time and effort. It will save you some money. And then again, in January, we also see a significant increase to my RRSP. So that's going to be probably just over $20,000. And then my TFSA, I think the limit's like $6,000 this year. So I'm going to be putting some money into both of those accounts at the beginning of 2022. So I'm holding a decent amount of cash right now. And it's for those four reasons right now. Probably market volatility, though, is probably the main reason. And because I do have some concerns about the direction of the market right now, especially with inflation, especially with Omicron right now now and some of the valuations on big cap stocks are extremely high and all of these growth stocks continue to get hammered and so I am holding off just a little bit and trying to be patient. Now on top of all of that we also usually see slightly less volume during the holidays and then it picks back up in January and so there's usually just slightly less opportunities in the market during those days. Now when it comes to my strategy for this week, I'm watching out for two things. Number one, I wanna know if Omicron numbers increase, so daily new cases, if that continues to increase. And then number two, I wanna see if governments continue to put in restrictions because if those two things happen, I think that could lead to a short-term bearish market. And in that scenario where we have a short-term bearish market, I have three different strategies where I plan to make money. So number one here is gonna be shorting stocks, particularly the cruise line. Number two is gonna be buying put particularly any airlines and number three is going to be to buy a leveraged inverse ETF probably SQQQ now I'm just gonna walk you through all three of these strategies here so so shorting a stock is fairly simple I've talked about this several times on my channel and the stock that I would be looking to short is Carnival Corporation, ticker symbol CCL. They have earnings coming out on Monday, and if those earnings do not go well, I think that will be a bearish catalyst for the stock to move lower. On top of the Omicron catalyst, I think that is just a recipe for disaster for this stock. So what I would be looking to do is short the stock if it falls below this support level right here around $15. Now, if I was looking to buy a put, I would probably be buying a put in Delta Airlines. So if Omicron goes crazy, people are gonna have to cancel their flights. These airlines are gonna lose a ton of money again, and these stock prices are gonna come back down. The reason that I would be shorting Delta Airlines is because they have the highest price to book value, which means compared to what they hold on the balance sheet, this is the most expensive company in the industry. They also have the worst balance sheet in the industry, or at least in the companies that I compared. And so I think that if we see a correction and a dip in the airline industries, Delta Airlines is gonna be hit the hardest because they have the weakest balance sheet and they have the highest valuation. Okay, now for the third strategy that I mentioned, SQQQ. So this is an inverse ETF, which means when the market goes up, the value of the ETF goes down. And when the market goes down, the value of this ETF goes up because it is an inverse. 
SQQQ is also a three times leveraged inverse ETF of the NASDAQ 100. So if the NASDAQ 100 goes down by 1%, SQQQ goes up by 3%. It's a three times leveraged index. And here is the chart just so you can see that. So this is the NASDAQ 100, which is the 100 largest companies in the NASDAQ index. And as you can see, it's basically trading upwards here in the beginning and then it levels out. And if you look at SQQQ, it is trading downwards in the beginning and then it levels out. And now if NASDAQ 100 drops down to support right here, the SQQQ is going to go up to the next level of resistance. And that's an opportunity for you to get into the SQQ. It's going to give you three times leverage compared to the normal ETF. And it's not going to give you that unlimited risk factor that you get when you short a stock. So there's significant advantages to all three of these different Different options. You can short the stock, you can buy the puts, or you can buy an inverse ETF, whatever works best for you. These are the three strategies that I'm going to go with if we see a market pullback next week caused by the Omicron virus. Now, if that doesn't happen, because nobody knows for sure what's going to happen next week, I personally think that's probably the most likely scenario based on what I've seen so far this weekend. However, I could, I could be completely wrong here, and maybe the market completely bounces back. So in that scenario, I also want to have a plan for that. I want to have a plan for the market recovery, and that market recovery is probably going to be led by a couple of factors. So this is what I'm going to be watching for. Number one is a decrease in daily new COVID numbers. Number two is less inflation fear. And number three is a recovery in the small cap stocks. I think the small cap growth stocks will probably be the companies that lead the recovery because with that growth, they probably represent the most undervalued plays in the market, assuming a long term bullish market. And so that's what I would be looking for. Those are the indicators that I would have my eye on. And these are the stocks that I would be watching. So number one is Adobe. Definitely not a small cap company, but I like Adobe. And the reason I like it is because I bought in on this previous dip down to 550, wrote it back up to around 6, 620 right here. And I did extremely well on this trade. And now the stock is coming back down to the exact same level of support. And so we have a bit of a double bottom right here. You can also see that we've got some wicks on the bottom of these two candles with increasing volume. And so what that shows me and what that tells me is that people are buying this stock up at 550. People find value in Adobe at 550. I think there's some value here in Adobe at 550. And if we see it start to trade sideways and then get a confirmation of a trend reversal and a bullish pattern out of this bounce off of support, Support, that's going to be my entry and I like Adobe for a ride back up to this kind of 650 640 area next stock here is Tesla I really like Tesla as a long-term company I'm a big fan of Elon I like what they're doing Tesla is super expensive though so I am swing trading in and out of it that's been kind of my strategy so far and it's worked great for me over the short term and what I like about Tesla right now is that we had a previous all-time high right here at 800 and 99 or maybe $900 right here. And then we came back down to 539. We then ran up to over $1,240 before now coming back down to this exact same 900 level. And so what goes through my head here is 900 is probably a pretty crucial level for this stock. And if 900 holds up, I think people are going to be buying in there. And I think that's going to hold up as a good level of support, which could mean a good entry point for us because I doubt it's going to fall below 900 once we see confirmation of good support. Okay, so the next company here is Cargo Jet. This is a Canadian airline company that moves parcels and packages uh, with basically 747s and super interesting companies. So they were trading at $228, pulled back down to 160, went back up to almost 200, and now they're trading at 160 again, almost on the exact same level, pretty much the exact same key level of support here. And I find it very interesting. So what I am looking for here is a confirmation and a bounce off of 160. So I want to see it break through this kind of blue line and hopefully this red line here. And I want to see it start to move in the bullish direction. We are also oversold according to the RSI. And it looks like we're starting to see a crossover from the MACD. So we are starting to see some bullish signs here. I think we could have some major support at 160. Next company here is SoFi Technologies. I've been following this company for a little while and I really Really, really like it. I also made a trade here um, on the bounce, actually not, not necessarily the bounce, on the breakout right here around 14 or 15. I wrote it up to probably 19 or 20. I didn't ride it up all the way as high as I could have gone, but that's okay. I made some profit on it and now the stock has fallen through our support level right here and has come back down to the exact same previous level of support. And so as long as 13, 
13.50 kind of holds up as support. We see it trade sideways for Monday, Tuesday maybe, and then start to break out. I'm going to be a buyer of SoFi Technology because this is a good company, they're in a great industry, and their revenue is absolutely amazing. So if you look at the revenue from SoFi, 2018, they did 269 million. 2019, it nearly doubled to 442. Then it went up by to 565, and in the trailing 12 months, they have already done 870 million. So I personally think this company is just on fire. Their revenue growth is absolutely amazing, and I like everything about the company, and they're down by 50% from the highs right now, so I think it's selling at a discount. Next company here is sort of similar to Tesla. They hit highs of 380, they pulled back a little bit, they set all time new highs, and then they came back down to that previous level of resistance. And this is basically an example of resistance turning into support. And so as you can see, we got hit right here, we got rejected at this double top right here at 380. We finally broke through it, and then over the last sort of like eight months here, we triple tested 380, we rose up to an all time high, and now we are testing 380 again. And so 380 is a very clear level of support for Lululemon. We're gonna have to see if it holds up, but as of right now, this looks like a great opportunity because if 380 holds up and history repeats itself, we could see a beautiful, beautiful bounce off of 380. I would probably put a trailing stop loss on it, but if we get some bad news or a bad catalyst or Omicron goes crazy, you could short the stock if it falls below 380 because that is a very clear level of support and there are people buying in at 380, but if we run out of buyers and we fall through 380, I would take a very short-term scalp trade on the breakthrough. Now, last company I wanna share with you is Open Door Technologies. This is a company I'm still doing a little bit more research on, but a similar pattern to SoFi, where they basically found major support right here around 13 14 dollars they almost doubled in value and now they have lost 50 of their value again and they're trading along that exact same level of support and so i'm watching this company very closely and sofi because they have very very similar patterns if we see both of them start to move up and we see a nice bullish market starting to form especially in that russell 2000 that could be a great opportunity to get back into some of these companies that are experiencing some major major growth now, just as a summary to this video, the markets right now are choppy, so there is nothing wrong with being patient. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to be patient, I'm trying to be selective, I'm holding a bunch of cash right now for the several reasons that I walked you through. And what I recommend is before you make, especially any short-term trades, you need to understand what direction the market is going before you make that trade. Because as of right now, over the last few weeks, the, the only direction it's gone in is in the bearish direction. However, it's not a massive pullback yet. So we can't say that we're seeing a massive dip. The market is not drastically selling off as of right now, but if Monday and Tuesday come out and Omicron goes crazy and restrictions come in, that could be a bearish catalyst. And now I've walked you through three different strategies that you can use to make some money on that. So if you're interested in learning a bit, little bit more about those strategies and about how to get invested in the market and understand the charts, then definitely consider signing up for my stock market course it is completely free for two weeks and the link is down below i also have a discord chat where i share all of my analysis all of my trades and an in-depth weekly watch list so if you want to see that and you want to get access to it definitely check out the links down below everything is available to you and i promise you they will be the best free resources that you can find online i will see you guys in the next video in the next week good luck trading good luck investing and we'll talk to you soon